Hi, I'm Michelle, and I would like to invite you to wake up and live. Today is day five, um, part five of the Create What You Want series, and it's St. Patrick's Day. I have my shamrock earrings on. I have my green eyeshadow on. I have my St. Patrick's Day shirt on. I have my Kiss Me, I'm Irish. Okay, so I'm not fully Irish, but I do have Irish ancestry and it's really fun. I love this day because it helps me to remember some of the incredible people that I have come from. And so with that, let's get started on today. Today is about letting go. Letting go. That is one of the most frustrating, like, concepts that I have come across in the years of studying the law of attraction. Like how in the world do you let go? They say, let go of the outcome. How do you do that? So let me share with you some of the things that I know that can and will work. Oh, I just remembered one. Another one I'm going to write it down so I don't forget. Okay. So the first one I want to talk to you about is having fun. Have fun with it. Play with it. Our souls at the core of who we are are very playful. Um, somewhere along the lines, we got told it was an okay to play, but that's not true. Our souls are very playful. And our souls are full of joy and they love to just be in that playful energy. So when you are being playful with it, you are actually being more authentic with yourself. And the more authentic you are, the more you can create what you want. So play with it, have fun with it. Ask questions like, wouldn't it be cool if, wouldn't it be cool if I met my sweetheart? Wouldn't it be cool if my sweetheart asked me to dance? Wouldn't it be cool if he asked me for a date? Um, questions like that. I did that recently, three weeks ago actually, three weeks ago today I posted on a Facebook group, like, or a Facebook post, wouldn't it be fun if I met my sweetheart tonight? And then I spent the entire night in a state of, letting go of judgments, letting go of um, crushes. Like I was like, I'm just gonna let it go. And if he turns out to be my son, he'll come back to me, kind of an idea, or at least letting go of holding on so tight to him being that person. So I've been practicing this and um, I met someone who, who knows, he could or could, maybe he is, maybe he's not. Um, he's a great guy and that was cool for me to actually find a guy that had at least some interest in me, interest in me that seems like a great guy. I was like, wow, this is different. This is the first time I've actually created a, a guy like that, like being interested in me. I've had some pretty lousy guys interested in me in the past. And so it was really cool to meet this kind of guy and to experience the kind of hugs that I've been imagining. And it doesn't matter if that's all it ever is. It doesn't matter if it goes farther than that. I learned so much from knowing Kim. And I hope that we're friends forever, but it is what it is. And maybe one day it will be more, maybe it will be less. We'll see. I have to, I'm letting go of that one. I am. I'm just like, it's just up to the universe. It's up to the Lord. It's up to, it's out there. If it happens, it happens. I'm going to keep doing the things I know that work for me. Um, I also, I got to see a guy there that I've only seen a couple of times and he, he shows up in the randomest times and maybe it's him. Who knows? I don't know. It was a fun night though. And that was what mattered. I was choosing fun and I was choosing playful and that's what I'm talking about. Be playful about it. Wouldn't it be cool if, wouldn't it be fun if, um, play games with it. One of the reasons people do like money games and stuff is because they're trying to get you into it play state, it doesn't always work for people because, you know, it may, it may not be as playful for people to actually do that. Um, it just, so some people work for some people won't, but find things that actually keep you playful and happy while you're playing around with it and doing it. If you start feeling like it's heavy, quit it. Don't do it anymore. Um, energy healing is probably my number one thing to do. It's like, Clear out the gook. As you notice things coming up, send it away. Clear and delete it. Um, I know lots and lots of tools for that, and I absolutely love doing it. Like, seriously, I love watching the changes come on people. I love watching them light up as they discover their soul that has been buried under all the layers of crap. Um, 
And that's one of the ways to let go of though is because what if you're holding on so tight because you feel like you need it? Well, if you do the energy work around that need, all of a sudden you'll let go and now it happens. Um, my favorite question, what would it feel like? What would it feel like to let go of the outcome just for a moment? What happens when you say that is in order for you to feel that you actually have to let go so that you can feel what it feels like without it. And then a lot of times you're like, oh, this feels so good. And you don't climb back on, climb back on, squeeze back on, whatever. You don't hold on again. So sometimes it's just that simple, just simply asking the question and you just let go and it's done. Sometimes you have to ask multiple times. Sometimes you have to do some other things. But sometimes it is that simple. What would it feel like to let go of the outcome? Now, recently I've been learning that Abraham Hicks created or talked about the 17 second thing. Like if you could do 17 seconds, um, a visualization in 17 sec sections, 17 section, section, hello, my mouth. It can speak and it can speak clearly. It can say exactly what I want it to say. 17 seconds of feeling good, 17 seconds of doing that framework thing where you, you plant the frame over, 17 seconds. That's all it takes to get into that state. And then if you repeat that 17 seconds a few times, it's even better. Um, and because the longer you can hold that space, the better. But if you can only hold it for 17 seconds, that's okay. So what would it feel like to let go of the outcome for 17 seconds? What would it feel like to let go of the outcome for an hour? What would it feel like to let go of the outcome for a day? What would it feel like to let go of the outcome for a week? After you do it a few times, maybe you could let go of it permanently. What would it feel like to let go of it permanently? Um, along with that is what would it feel like to get what you want? And notice if you have any negative things coming up for you. Because if you have negative thing, negative feelings, negative being anything that takes you away from your true self, feeling that joy, peace, peaceful, enlightened, love, all those really positive, like really yummy feeling energies. If, if it's taking you away from it, it's negative. If it's bringing you closer to your true self, it's positive. Um, your true self is under all that guck. And so if it's bringing you closer to who you are inside, awesome do it. If it's not, let it go. Do something about it. Do some journaling, doing some energy work, do some more questions so that you can let go of those negative feelings. Embrace your feelings. I did a video yesterday about um, feeling your feelings and embracing your feelings. So if you're coming up with a feeling that doesn't bring you closer to who you are, do something about it. And so that's it. Like if you, to get it, to get what you want, like, what does it feel like to get what you want? If you feeling joyful and peaceful, um, kind of almost like your body goes and just sighs into it. That's a great feeling. And that's what you want. And when you get to there, then you ask the next question, what does it feel like to not get it? What does it feel like if you don't get what you want? What does it feel like if I don't get my sweetheart? What does it feel like if I don't get the money that I'm looking for right now? What does it feel like if nobody subscribes? If nobody comments? If nobody um, shares this video? What does that feel like? And Notice how you feel about it. If you feel any kind of tightness or constriction, that's something to address. That's something to ask about. If you are feeling peaceful about it and you're still in that side place, you did it. That is the place to be because that's because you want to be in this place where um, you're okay if it doesn't come and you're okay if it does. And you're just in this place of okay because that is the place of allowing that is allowing. That's the other question that's similar. What would it feel like to allow it to happen? You have letting it go, but what that like, great, let it go. But 
Great. I let it go, but it's still over there. So that's awesome. What would it feel like to allow it to come to you? What would it feel like to allow it to be with you? What would it feel like to allow yourself to be one with it? And that's the next level of questions. So ask those questions until you be peace. You are peaceful about it. And you can, if you do have a tight feeling, what would it feel like to let go of the tight feeling? What would it feel like to allow the tight feeling? What would it feel like to embrace the tight feeling? Like ask these different kind of questions and just keep going. What would it take to let go of it? Um, what, um, you can even ask how questions. Like there's nothing wrong with how questions and people tell you not to. Sorry, I'm ugly. Um, you can do it. You can ask how questions if that's what, um, if that's going to get you closer to your answers, it doesn't matter. Um, just be doing the questions that are going to help you and notice if you start to feel tight, if you start to feel angry, if you start to feel, um, constricted, that's the stuff that you get to clear and heal because that's the stuff that's going to prevent you from creating what you want. That's the stuff that's holding your soul back and not allowing it to shine. Um, my next subject to talk about is time, 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 time. We have so many limiting beliefs about time, but there is an affirmation that if you say it, it can actually really transform your relationship with time. And I have some other affirmations and I intend to do a video completely about time. But here's the affirmation. <clears throat> I have plenty of time to enjoy everything I am doing. There are so many aspects to that um, affirmation, that declaration that it deserves its own video. But let's talk about one of the things. When we, one of the things that happens because we're holding on tight is we get this urgency that we have to have it right now. Urgency is constrictive energy. It is tight. It is heavy. It is holding on. That's what urgency is. And you want to let go of urgency and trust and believe that you have plenty of time. You really do have plenty of time. And, you know, if you die today, it doesn't matter that you wanted this thing and didn't get it. So don't worry about like, oh my gosh, I only have so much time because I'm going to die. That's not what it's about. It's about living right now and being in the joy right now and recognizing that if it really matters, you'll create it. If you really desire it, you'll create it. And if something happens before you get there, it is what it is. There's perfect timing and everything and it's okay. But you have plenty of time. I have plenty of time to meet and marry my ideal sweetheart. It doesn't have to happen right now. Now, it seems contradictory because now exists right now, right? And the, um, the future exists right now and the past exists. All things are right now. So it seems kind of contradictory to say that it doesn't have to happen right now. With the concept, we're trying to let go of urgency. We want to be in a place of peaceful allowing. And when you trust that there's plenty of time for it to happen, you become peaceful and allowing. So practice it. I have plenty of time to attract my sweetheart. I have plenty of time to get married. I have plenty of time to create that money. I have plenty of time to lose the weight or let go of the weight or weigh a certain amount or plenty of time for my jeans to get baggy. Whatever you need to do, or just say I have plenty of time to enjoy everything I'm doing. Um, have fun with it. See what that takes you. See what you learn from that one. And watch for my video. Oh, well, that was creepy. Whoa. My little lamp. I, I do my videos sitting on my bed because of my current situation. I expect that things will get better soon, but it is what it is. And so when I wiggle at all, everything falls over. The, ca the computer wiggles. The lamp lamp obviously falls over. But I've let go of the outcome of this video and it is what it is and you will get what you need from it. Last thing. This is one of my favorite things because I have manifested so many things with this one. I don't know why I don't use it more. Maybe because I can't, I wonder what happened to my notebook I used to use for this. I had a specific notebook that I used for this and now I get to find it. Okay, I can find it later. 
have plenty of time to find a notebook, right? Okay, so I write letters to the universe. I call her Auntie Universe. I call her Auntie U, Dear Aunt Universe, Dear Auntie U, um, Dear Auntie. Like I write her letters and I tell her everything God gave me. Um, you can tell her that, hey, thank you so much. I got this from you and it was so fabulous. If you wanted to actually thank the universe for it. Um, if you want to thank your higher self for it, you can say, dear Aunt Universe, my higher self did this. I just received this and it was fabulous. And I talked about how wonderful it was to get this little butterfly necklace that, um, that I wanted. I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I would love that necklace. It was so pretty. And so I, um, I wrote a letter, Dear Auntie You. It was amazing. And I don't remember all that I said in it, but I, I just was writing how cool it was to get this necklace and how much I love it. And then we were going on a trip. And our trip, we went from Utah up over in Montana, down in Nebraska, um, over to, you know, like across Montana, Nebraska, um, and down into, no, we didn't go to Montana. Wyoming. Hello, brain. I'm like, and not so okay. We went and we ate in Cheyenne. Um, and Cheyenne, Wyoming was where I saw it. And I know we ate in Cheyenne because my daughter's name is Cheyenne and it's hilarious. Um, not spelled the same, but she was like, I ate in Cheyenne and I am Cheyenne. And anyway, <laughs> so that's where we saw um, this necklace. It was in uh, the gas station that had Wendy's in it in Cheyenne. And so we went across to Wyoming and over across Nebraska into Illinois, um, down through Missouri, Kentucky, and into Nashville, Tennessee, where my brother got married. And then when we were coming home, um, we actually came through Kansas and Colorado to come home. So we didn't come back the same way. And so in our reality, I couldn't have that butterfly necklace because it was in Cheyenne. But one of the places we stopped, I think in Kansas, maybe in Missouri, um, had a necklace. And my mom had been buying my kids gifts. And she just turned to me and she was like, you can pick something too. I'll get you something too. And I just went, are you serious? I'm like, well, how much money, you know, can I spend? Like, you know, I was just like kind of floored. And she told me the amount, and it was enough to not only, oh, no, it was enough to buy this. I actually got something else. I was like, wait, it's your house tonight at home. Okay. <laughs> we have some fun family trips. Um, so she bought me a necklace, a butterfly necklace. It was just like the one in Wyoming only. This one was in Kansas or somewhere else. A different part of the trip. Only a few days after I had written that letter and... I now own that necklace and I think it is gorgeous and beautiful and it's so fun. Um, the other one is the last thing. So, okay. So write your anti universe letters because you write them and you just kind of put it away and there's so much disconnect with it. It's just like, Oh, I disconnected. I did this. Um, this is a longer video because there's so many ways to do this. Because I have two more to talk about. I just remembered. One of them, I walked into a restaurant. I saw a blouse. I had been actually wanting to know what my style would look like, what would look good on me and things like that. And I wanted it to be a soul thing. Um, and I walked in and I saw this gorgeous, and again, butterflies. Have you noticed? I have a thing for butterflies. Um, so I saw this gorgeous, gorgeous blouse and I just went, <gasps> that's it. That looks just like me. That's like, so what my soul wants to wear. I want something like that. And then I went on and, um, this restaurant was outside of our, the store was outside of a restaurant. So I went into the restaurant. We had lunch with my aunts. And while there, my aunt said, Oh, you're getting ready to go to your brother's wedding. Same time period. Right. And she bought me the blouse because she thought it would be, look gorgeous on me and be the perfect thing to wear to my brother's wedding. So I wore it to his wedding and it was, I've noticed that when I can do that, when I was like, Oh, I want something like that. Um, like with the guy thing, like I want someone like that. 
Like if I see something that I like in a guy, a quality that I like, oh, I want something like that. I want somebody with that quality. And you're not holding specifically onto that specific item. You're holding onto some concepts, some um, qualities about it. And that actually helps you to let go. And you can actually sometimes receive the exact thing. Um, other times you'll receive something similar. Um, which is one of the reasons why with affirmations like this are better. A part of that is to, to um, allow it to be exactly right for you because maybe what you're thinking of isn't quite right. Um, and then there was one more. I was thinking. I hate it when I do this. Okay, I love myself. I love when I do this. I love that everything is perfect. What did I want to say? Maybe that's just enough. I'll remember when I end this and I'll be like, oh, I was going to say that. Oh, well. Maybe that was it. Maybe that truly was it. Maybe I was thinking it before. <laughs> anyway, so um play and have fun with it oh yes here's the thing i knew i'd remember um going past the mark so if you want to win a gold medal you can do all the visualizations you want standing on that dais receiving the gold medal but if you really want to win it you have to see yourself stopping off you have to see yourself moving on to the next thing because that's when you're no longer sitting in the energy and you're in, and now your energy is like, oh man, I've got to make that happen. And so it catches up to you. So you've got it. And I used this for um, publishing a children's book. I, instead of focusing on publishing it, I put, focused on seeing it in the library and that got me past. So it's published and, um, it might, they're, they're doing a lot of construction on my local library, so we'll see if it shows up in the library soon. But my um, children's book's actually available on Amazon to buy hard bound, soft bound, and as a Kindle. So it's pretty cool because I actually published it. it took me three years from the time I finished it to getting it published, and it took stepping into this idea of doing it stepping beyond. Now my friend, I know we're like, this was a really long video, but this is a great story if you ask me. My friend and I talked about it and he, um, he used to race motorbikes and he would talk about how there were four types of people on the track. There were the people who didn't really believe they could do anything and they always came in last. Um, there were the people who um, thought they were fairly good, they were having fun with it, but they weren't necessarily thinking they were winners and they would come kind of in the middle. Um, then there was these people that like they were focused on winning. That was their focus was on winning and they would come in like third or fourth place. And then there were the people and this was what my friend did. And this is how he works in his, um, a lot of things that he does is he focused on, he didn't focus on winning. He focused on holding the trophy at the end. He took himself past winning to holding the trophy. And he says, everybody who comes into the races with that mentality of holding that trophy, they come in first or second place every time. And that's one of the things is you've got to go past it. What do you want? Go past it. What is the next step? What does it look like after? What does it look like after you receive it? Um, I heard of a guy who coached a, um, pushed somebody on doing a football play. And instead of focusing on doing the play, he focused on watching the replay on TV. And that's when he did it. That's how he got it. So that's the same kind of idea. Step ahead, create it ahead. Um, see those wedding pictures on the wall. Um, see yourself doing stuff as a married couple. Past the wedding. Um, see what you're doing with your life after you've paid off all your bills. Go past the stage. Go past what you want. And that's another way of letting go because now you've moved on. And so that's in the past as far as your intentions go. And therefore, it has to be created so you can get to where you're at. Okay. So those are lots of ideas, lots of things to think about. Um, probably a little bit longer video than I wanted to create. Um, I'm like, I keep seeing this. It's kind of fun. It's got sparkles in it. I don't know if you can tell that. 
Um, anyway, I'm going to be putting more on before I go dancing. <laughs> Have a great, great, great day. I will see you tomorrow. Be sure to comment, like it, subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notifications of when the next video will come out and share the video. Share it if you found anything valuable. Um, I put the playlist in the little thing across. Um, be sure to share the playlist so that they can start from the beginning. And I'll also add that at the end. I don't remember which side it goes on. Um, so do that. And remember to let your soul shine bright. We want to see you. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.